Great. Dale, let's talk a little bit about uh, trade. Uh, we are in the midst of uh, doing a trade deal with uh, Europe, uh, perhaps with China, with India. Uh, we already have uh, the FDA and NAFTA. Uh, do you think we're going to benefit more now with those uh, new developments, new trade deals that are being signed up? So trade is obviously really important to Canada. Um, our economy is one that uh, builds and develops products and services and sells them globally. Um, I think Canada has weathered very well in a tough economic storm and that has been our ability to retool ourselves to, to go after new markets in other nations when maybe not favorable here. For example, with the rising do US dollar, our uh, small companies have had to look at other markets. So when it comes to agreements, I think it's really important that our country is establishing agreements so that when our companies uh, and our entrepreneurs are doing investment deals or whether it's, in, it's protecting their intellectual property, that there is an understanding of how that, uh, that it, it's fair and equitable for both sides. Mm -hmm. What uh, would you say to the opposition to free, uh, free trade deals, saying that uh, we've been trading alone for since the beginning of Canada, and that these trade deals are basically uh, uh, helping uh, investors rather than labor? Well, I think we have to recognize that at, in any business transaction, there is an exchange, there is an investment component, there is a labor component, and a product component, whether it's a product or service. And so, I think on the recent trade deal that we're working on with Asia and with China is obviously uh, investor protection rights, whether it's a Canadian investing in Asia or an, 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 an Asian investing in Canada, that they understand that there is fair and equal uh, rights for both parties. And I think that's really important to establish that um, because that uh, leads to better business development. Mm -hmm. the, some critics of the trade deals also point out that uh, there is uh, not enough transparency, that the deals are being uh, negotiated uh, and behind closed doors. Uh, any thoughts about it? Yeah, you hear that, and um, I, I have to say that I don't think that's actually the true. There's not a true uh, representation of what happens. Um, this is this is a trade deal between two companies. Canada is creating a framework for two companies to have a fair deal. And any time two companies have a discussion, that, that's a it's a company to company transaction. So. Um, so, so that the free trade deals are not country to country, are company to company. Well, they're, 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 they're country to country to create an environment for doing trade on this one on investment. But at the end of the day, it's an investment from two, a mutual investment by two companies. So why is the government uh, involved in it at all if it's just two companies? I think it's important that the government of Canada uh, creates environments for us to do business. So if we look at the government of Canada, it's created an environment to encourage the development of small business. It's encouraged an environment to go overseas and have your intellectual property rights protected. So that government, our government is, is creating an environment for us to do trade. Then it's up to us as companies and individuals to do trade. And I'm happy that we have a framework to do that in. Uh, what is your personal position or your party's position on trade in general, free trade agreements, because we've been, being, we've been trading for a long time, but is this free trade agreements? Well, there, we have to think agreement by agreement, I think, and identify whether any particular agreement is in Canada's favor. In favor. I think that um, the Green Party in general is in favor of global trade agreements. Uh, the bigger the, mar the market, the more uh, 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 wealth will be produced. Unfortunately, some of the uh, agreements that the Harper government has entered into seem to be unbalanced in favor of the other side. For example, the Canada-China investment agreement that is on the point possibly of being ratified by Mr. Harper uh, seems to be a uh, decidedly one-sided affair where Canadian investors uh, uh, have very little benefit from China, but Canadian, but Chinese in investors in uh, Canada seem to be able to um, uh, benefit greatly. 
and all the negotiations and all the settlements under this agreement will be in secret. So we actually don't know what the uh, the nature of the negotiations will will be. How about the uh, European trade agreement? Well, I think that that's uh, that sounds a, uh, a beneficial. There's um, there's all sorts of details that are. Uh, of concern, for example, uh, ensuring that our farmers are protected uh, and that they that their interests in uh, uh, in uh, having a workable a working industry uh, that 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 their interests are respected. Uh, again, we're seeing the negotiations. I think the ne negotiating is a good thing, but the uh, we have to look at the end result to see whether it's beneficial to Canada. Have you seen the negotiations? Uh, no, I think that uh, I mean currently I think that they're in the works. We have to we have to wait until the the final package is produced, and then we'll be able to go through it in detail. You don't think that uh, politicians or people at, at large should be uh, uh, should be required to have an opinion on those negotiations? Well, I think so. Yes, and I think that there should be uh, much more transparency and openness in identifying. Uh, how they are going, what the uh, what the Canadian interests, what the Canadian benefits from the agreement will be. It does seem that the negotiations uh, are something that go go on behind closed doors, and we do only hear about it at the end. Uh, I would I would much prefer to see a uh, an open, transparent, uh, democratic approach to international agreements. We do not see that at the moment. There is an issue that. Uh your former leader, uh, John Turner. John was, Turner. Uh, John gracious. Turner. <laughs> My former ago. leader? Yes. So this was, now you're going back. <laughs> 1988. Uh, you may be a foreigner, then, but you probably know Canadian politics better than I do. But I've been here for a while. In 1988, I was in, uh, I was in Japan. Okay. I was a student but, at University so of Tokyo. So let me tell you what happened, because you weren't here. I was probably but, following uh, it, though. John Turner was uh, in defense of, or he was anti-free trade. Anti-free trade. And uh, Mulroney was signing the free trade agreement. Oh, the free trade election. What, what, right. what is your position or your party's position on the free trade in general right now? It's absolutely clear uh, in an economy, a global economy, that's about $65 trillion in size, mm -hmm. if you add up all the economies. Canadian economy is about one and a half trillion, so we're a little bit less than two percent. The Canadian economy cannot survive. We cannot have world-class economic education and health outcomes if we don't trade with the rest of the world. Uh, and the way to trade with the rest of the world uh, is to have codified agreements where there's reciprocity on both sides. The challenge is uh, you know, do you, as some political parties suggest, say that we shouldn't uh, be in the resource allocation business? The Conservative government is signing, uh, is in the process of signing an investment uh, deal uh, with China, which would put the Canada at a great disadvantage because Canadian companies will never have the same equality under the law as Chinese companies would in Canada. So Canada needs to trade. We'll never be smart enough or rich enough to educate all the people and build all the products that Canada needs to create a successful 21st century social democracy. So just using a simple phrase like free trade, uh, I think is not the more sophisticated or nuanced way uh, to think about where Canada fits in a 21st century globalized economy. Okay, I, I hear you saying that uh, we do need to trade with other nations because right. our economy depends on it. However, the argument that the anti-free trade, uh, uh, the opposition to free trade, is that free trade is not about trade, but it's about liberating uh, international capitals to move around and take their best advantage. So as some people say, is the constitution for the corporations is not necessarily about free trading, because we've been trading since the beginning of, uh, of, uh, of Canada. You know, Pedro, um, I remember debating this when I was a graduate student with mm -hmm. the structural Marxists uh, in, uh, you know, in my grad school. Uh, look at the countries that don't trade. And look at the countries where trade is a percentage of their economy because, of re because they don't trade is very small. They're poor. Uh, they're countries that uh, don't have access to leading edge technology, and they don't have the presence of large and efficient companies uh, within, within, those, uh, within those economies. The challenge always is the same, and that is that the market is always going to try to have its own way. The challenge is to make sure that the political process 
is democratic, uh, and that you use the state in order to tax and regulate uh, the economy and the companies in them in a way that's environmentally, socially, and economically responsible. You know, just saying oh, multinational capital is going to come and you know take over the Canadian economy, there's no evidence of that, particularly where the state uh, puts in place intelligent regulatory policy to manage and steer those companies mm -hmm. uh, to the right place. The problem with the Conservative government is they believe the state doesn't have the, the, the right to do that, mm -hmm. that the market is always right, and Liberals don't believe that. They believe there has to be a balance between the twin virtues of a strong economy and social justice. Well, what, what do you think, what's your position or your party's position on free well, trade in general? Uh, well, free trade, I mean, we support it. I mean, uh, individual private trade means that the government has no business making trade deals with other governments, which amounts to favoring one business over another. Uh, picking winners and losers is not in the interest of the individual consumer. Uh, instead, government uh, dominating the lives of Canadians through taxes and regulations. Uh, the Liberal Libertarian uh, Party of Canada believes that Canadians should be able to free to run their own lives. Uh, we believe in a just, voluntary society that does not use government power to confiscate property or uh, uh, interfere with peaceful activities. Government should only uh, act as our servants and, and never as our masters. Uh, I guess uh, many Canadians are, I guess they're sitting uneasy uh, about the secrecy that, that we're seeing in this country with these these free trade uh, talks and, and from the EU to um, North American Union trade and all the other ones that we have. And you, and you can't blame Canadians because it's not out in the open. They're just making deals. And, and um, like we propose the, uh, you know, like we support free trade, but not when the government decides that, you know, the people don't need to be part of the process. So when you say you support free trade, you support trade in general that is free of tariffs? Or what, what part of that word free is that you support? Well, we favor uh, true free trade with all nations. Which is? Uh, however, it must be recognized that some nations see trade as a route to economic conquest, and we must resist trade with any nation that does this. Uh, what do you think about free trade in general? Well, the first principle, of course, is to maintain our sovereignty. We are Canada. We are Canada, and we are Canadians. And so we've got to maintain our sovereignty. And the problem is how much of the goods in your store do you sell at rock bottom prices in order to ha keep the books black, right? It's dumb. You can't give away things. You can't keep a store that way. Everybody knows that. It's basic business principles. And so when you negotiate, you've got to make sure that you're getting at least as much as you give. And you cannot sell the assets of Canada unless you've got a very, very good reason. The problem is we live in a global village and all of us have to trade. All of us, I've lived in six countries, I've taught in many universities and we have to be able to get along and have to understand those cultures and we come back to Canada like I do. And this is my country. So do you think we're doing all right with the free trade agreements? We should uh, proceed uh, full speed. Our prime minister is outside of uh, the country right now negotiating uh, trade agreements with India. Do you think he is in the right track? We don't know. Do you? I don't think anybody knows until we see what's on those things. But I do insist that he debates these things in Parliament. Mm 